Okay. First, uh, my name is Ahmad Gohar. I'm working for IBM uh, Egypt uh, Center, is the uh, client and innovation center. I'm uh, working as a solution architect and uh, tech uh, lead. I am a certified uh, L2 expert IT specialist and also open group master IT specialist. I hold two masters, one in information system and one from uh, master of business administration from Slesk University. I am a Java geek. And first, uh, today we have uh, three sessions about blockchain. Do anyone attain any other uh, the first two sessions? Please raise his hand. Perfect, okay. Uh, how many of you know uh, information about blockchain? Please raise his hand up. Perfect, and how many of you have uh, hands-on experience on a blockchain? Perfect, couple of hands. Which industry? I'm sorry? Healthcare. Healthcare. Perfect. And actually, uh, usually I have a question when I I present any other talks that when they people know that I have uh, some blockchain experience, they ask me, what's blockchain? And then actually I was asked that question from three levels, from children's, from university graduates and from an expert peoples. And if your child came and asked you the simplest way, what's a blockchain? How can you define a blockchain to him? Anyone want to share with me his experience? Yeah, please, uh, I'd like to make it interactive. So if you have information, please give it to us to share with all the colleagues. From a high level, what's a blockchain? I'm sorry. A database, okay. What else? List of transactions, perfect. And what else? Distributed, perfect. Yes. Any extra information? Yes. Okay, actually, it's 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 a way that you can trade anything between two parties without need to a store using a network of computers. And actually the aim of the blockchain it is wasn't owned by a single company. We can increase that its is its trade can be one to one easily. Uh, actually uh, some stores like Amazon do the one to one transactions easily and distributed but if we need to increase and neglect the intermediary we can in remove amazon or like stores with the punch of software that run all, uh, over the computers that engage it in that network those networks have the contains the transaction it's distributed all over another other uh, computers inside that network you, uh, it was encrypted and all the transactions are logged. And if we are thinking about this picture that uh, traditional model of trade finance and, and, and now I want you to think about not, not that I'm buying that laptop from Amazon, but think about that uh, Amazon need to import a bunch of laptops from China. So the buyer and seller need to have two trusted banks that make those transactions and those banks need to communicate with each other actually th this cycle we usually do it I uh, in importing and in exporting that cycle need uh, contracts between the buyer bank and seller bank and the contract between a buyer and his bank and the contract between uh, the seller and his bank and the contract between a buyer and seller bank that contract can be uh, formalized in a blockchain environment as a smart contract and it's scaled from a small contract to a complex one like if i want to 
give my child a money so I can give him some big coins to be shared with him. And if I want to make it a complex that I want to import or export using some transactions. And actually those transactions in the current environment takes about one to two, one to three days for signing of those contracts. And if it was importing and exporting, it may lead to uh, two to three months. Using smart contract, it's just a minute with a small amount of money without uh, physical signatures. It's all digital, it's encrypted. And actually the law are stored inside the smart contract. So one of us mentioned that it's a kind of database. Yes, and if you were coming from database administration or database development perspective, you can imagine that the blockchain is a kind of database. It's actually distributed ledger, not a distributed database. What it means that if we have a centralized database like we all our days, and we have a SQL database upgraded to NoSQL database, which is unstructured, now we have a distributed ledger that ledger Actually, uh, do you know what ledger mean? Abstractly, ledger it's it's a, a kind of record that can be abandoned over. So usually, the financial sector use a ledger, the accounting, and actually, if you if you think about any industry that have a record and need to abandon, uh, if it's a business process or something like that, you can consider it as a ledger. Okay, now we are using a uh, physical uh, cash. Actually, those physical cash need to be transferred uh, from one to other. I, I, I'll skip this section quickly because I think you may hear this in the, the previous two lectures. The e-cash start to solve the, uh, the problem of uh, you can't exchange a physical money inside the internet uh, world. Usually, we are linking between a blockchain and a Bitcoin. A Bitcoin is a uh, distributed and decentralized currency system. It's invented by Satoshi after the world uh, financial crisis. And that's the style of the Bitcoin transaction that you can see the public key and the signature. And if you are thinking about Bitcoin, what's Bitcoin? Bitcoin, it's, 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 it's a protocol using a Bitcoins as a currency and then transfers the coins from one to another using a transaction encrypted using a public and private keys. How can we spend a Bitcoin? Actually, if, if, if we're thinking about that we need to send a Bitcoin from address Y to address Z, we need to create a new block, gather the information for that transaction, <coughs> verify that transaction, and solve the hashing problem. How can the transaction verified? Actually, first, a miner check the signature of the key of the address of the Y. Then, it computes the public key of Y and the signature of, of it using the public key of Y. How come? And let me, let me skip the slide now. The hashing. Hashing is it's, it's, it's the encryption uh, methodology which we use in the uh, blockchain. Actually, it's, it's a simple way. It's something like a function like SH, hashing algorithms. It encrypts the data. Okay, so it encrypted the data, and if you think, if you've seen any minor changes that's Fox here, it's small and it's our case, you will find the hashing function or the hashing output changes, which means that your data had been changed without knowing what is the current state of the data and the output of the data. So, how, how does blockchain work? And if we have a block, and we need to update that block. Actually, blockchain don't know the concept of updating like a database. It's a bending over the ledger. And actually, we don't update the record because of it 
introduced an attack that you can update a record. And if you want to update a record like I have 100 Bitcoin and give it to you. So I have a new record in that chain. The first one called it's with Gohar and then it's with X. And if X re returned it to Gohar or give it to another one, it will have a new block. That chain contains those sections. And if we see that's the first block, it's initiating a block, it's block zero, nobody, and don't have a parent hash and nonce. And if we need to introduce, and that's my block, and if I want the block to be introduced to another one, I didn't update that block, I just add a new block here, and that block contain the new owner, the hash function, the hash output of the previous block, then the new value. And also, if I need to update that record again, I create a new block. And actually, if, if you think about if you, if if you want to cheat or I want to change that one, okay, so the hash output of that one will be changed, which will into increasing to changing that hash one because that hash one, it contains the hash of the previous block plus the hash of the content of that block. So, can we cheat? Can we make a fake hash? And actually the algorithm will fail. Why? First, the hash of that block will, will introduce uh, or, or will inform you that the previous block hash is illegal. So if you are power enough to hack all those blocks, right? So you hash, you hack that hash and update that one and that one. Now your hash, it's entirely work it. But it work in the computers that you can hack. What if that code are distributed among a lot of computers inside the network. What will be done? The other network will reject that block and will mark that block in that computer. It's not working because it had been hacked. Okay. And actually, if you, if, if, if you want to to hack that way you need about 51% or more of the computer need to be hacked with your code at simultaneously with a high computer power and it's a distributed. So if you can do it, do it uh, there will no uh, be a block chain. You will have a more power that can control that chain. Okay. Uh, do we have a physical Bitcoin? Yes, we have a physical Bitcoin. And we, we, we mentioned uh, that we have a public and private key that when a sender needs to send a message to a recipient or a text or anything that needs to be shared using a blockchain, it needs to be encrypted using the public key and the receiver will decrypt the message with the private key. Actually, that diagram, it's, it's about Gartner uh, diagram. It's not about the blockchain only. It's about the, tr the uh, new technology and its trend. It's divided into a lot of sections that the innovation trigger, the peak of inflate expectation, the delumination and the scope of alignment and also. And actually, actually, I can't read it. I think it's, it's here, blockchain. Right, blockchain, it's at the end of the peak of inflamed, uh, inflamed elimination. That means that at, the, at this period, the, uh, the environment think more about the technology that it can do more than it expect. And thanks God that periods is declining and we start to realize what's a blockchain and what's the environment of the blockchain and what the industries need blockchain. If you want any information about blockchain, you can go to blockchain.info. It has a lot of diagrams and graphs that represent 
the uh, state of the blockchain. That diagram, it's uh, showing how many megabytes of blocks in blockchain starting from early 2009 till December 2017. And actually, you will find that it's exponentially f the, the first portion. It's it's we are always trying to make the blockchain working. And actually, I remember that when I start to read more about blockchain in that era uh, during my PhD studies, I came back to my manager or my uh, supervisor at the university, and I told her that uh, I think blockchain it's about network and security. Because at that era, that's the main point of a blockchain, that how can you secure the data among those distributed systems. 2017, you see that, that it's, it's exponentially increased size of blocks, which means that exponentially adoption of the blockchain inside the environment. And actually, you will see that almost all the startups, banks, and a big enterprise or small to medium enterprise start to adopt a blockchain. Even if, if we are saying, usually we, s we speak about blockchain that it's way to transfer a money from a sender to a receiver without an industry, uh, without an, a company or intermediary. And you will find that here it's a Western Union, which is based on transferring money from a sender to a receiver. And actually, if companies like Western Union didn't adopt a blockchain, it will die. So it's a study blockchain to improve her service now and try to think about how to change her business, its business model. And actually, and if it's the stages of a human or a technology, what do you think about where we are for as a blockchain? I know we sure we are not in that direction, but we're in that direction. Yes, but it's at the end of the infants. We will start to wake up. To actually here we 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 used uh, to uh, in our companies to uh, invest and try to make a proof of concepts and now we start to make some softwares or applications to be realized in the business environment to increase a lot. And it's its expectation of the blockchain starting from 2015 to 10 years, and then we will uh, pass through three phases that we are now investigating. Now we will experiment, then we will experiment the blockchain, and we will adopt it. Actually, the majority of a blockchain, and, and uh, each one working in a blockchain knows that it's every couple of months, you get a new version of blockchain. Uh, what I mean by blockchain, it it's doesn't matter if it's a Bitcoin or Ethereum, you are working with a hyperledger or a composer, you have a new product, new version, some fixes, and you sometimes when you pretending your labs, you need to update your lab to, ma to cope with a new fix. And if you are, are making a proof of concepts or something like that, you need to update it also. That means that the, the development of the blockchain by the industry or the open source committers or the enterprise companies, they are heavily investigating in that and heavily expanding this. Okay. That's the market drivers which divert us and support the blockchain. And if, if, if you think about economic developments, it's promoted GDP and we will see the details of all that section in the detailed slide of each industry. But what I want to say that that the technology enablers that the digital transformation, as you know all we are from about five years ago, the MIT community announced that we are in the digital transformation, that uh, all those technologies are a fact. Whatever we are with or without, but it's a fact. And if, if, if we get back for five years, Internet of Things, IoT, 
that have a hassle of the security, the deployment, the battery consumption. But actually, nowadays, no one can argue about IoT, can that I can introduce my device as IoT or not. So that's a cloud, social and media and mobile application, big data, Internet of Things, blockchain. Actually, a blockchain has its own nature. And if, if you think about cloud, and you were ca came, came from a uh, mainframe background, you know that it's a matter of virtual reality. And if you are thinking about big data, big data, it's a matter of structured and unstructured data, and the size is relative to the era of you are. But blockchain, actually blockchain can integrate with all of those, that can integrate with IoT, which is a decentralized device that send its content to a centralized, now it can send this data to a distributed ledger. And the applications that monitor the blockchain can be on the cloud. And also, you can have a mobile application can access the blockchain and see what's your states of your transaction. And big data and reporting can also introduced over the blockchain. And now, Banking and payment industry. Now, in that section, we will explore a lot of industries that benefit from blockchain. Do you agree or not that the banking and payment industries benefit from blockchain? Agree or don't, don't agree? Hey, it's the first industry. <laughs> banking. Actually, the issue of blockchain that we as an end user, not as a technical guy, we didn't make a transaction using a blockchain before. But we may make a software that makes that transaction using a blockchain. And we can get a confidence of that technology until we do it ourselves. 10 to 15 years ago, when a credit card and electronic payment is in newly, introduced, we are not, uh, we don't guarantee that that, that card contain our money that can be sent to the seller, and the seller can hack that card and take more than what we need. Actually, banking and payment industry is one of the major beneficiary from the blockchain, and, and some people think about blockchain that it supports the banking and financial industry. Yes. And, and, and actually, banking and financial transaction, uh, we can say that the pin of the Java, or we can see that what Internet did to the media. Blockchain was expecting to change the banking industry like the Internet did with the media. And actually, we have a Bitcoin which invests more and more in blockchain to engage the banks in that industry. Do you know any banks that use blockchain now, actually in his production environment? Banks. Do you have Barclays here in Poland? Barclays is one of the uh, big banks, uh, I think it's based in UK and have uh, different look uh, Loca in different locations, he starts to realize he realized that the blockchain will invade the bank, and he need to be the industry leader in that sector. So he started to invest and change some of his business into blockchain. And actually, we have another co uh, company which is it's actually it's a startup. It's called Abra. Th it's uh, it's uh, it's based in uh, based in Bitcoin. It used to transfer the remittance and the calculation of the remittance. Cybersecurity industry. We saw that one of the main threads of blockchain, firstly, is that you need to secure your blocks or the chain of blocks, and you want to prevent its attack. And how? If it's attack, it will be rejected from other ne computers in that network. Blockchain get matured enough with that way of how can you uh, 
make it a public, make 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 all the transaction in public in th those computer, and actually, it's uh, if in cybersecurity we are worried worried about if the transaction had been attacked in the middle, how can you know that it had been attacked? It's actually the cybersecurity game of all the network, and if you hack that complete chain in that network, it will be rejected from the other network because that chain was have a similar copies in other networks. Supply chain management industry also benefits from that because it's it's uh, it's have a document and this document needs to be stored and uh, the best way not to store th those document in centrali centralized uh, environment we have uh, some startups actually in, in 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 the supply chain management we find some startups that work in how to minimize the time and the cost in increase the labor worst and emission forecasting industry is also incre uh, uh, benefits from this uh, blockchain because and forecast you need to have a system of record that you need to realize and you need that system of record to be secured a blockchain you have your system of record you have the log of the transactions uh, any updates of the transactions that you can build your forecast there Anger is one of the uh, startups that uh, now it's building its uh, framework based on the blockchain that it expect it changes the dimension of the forecasting environment. Network and IoT industry actually IBM and Samsung are using blockchain technology to try to make the decentralized network record network of IoT devices. IoT devices, it's a decentralized because it's scattered all over, but it should be it should send its data to a centralized repository, even it's a broker or um, MQ or something like that. Now IBM and Samsung think about no, it's a decentralized and we need to benefit from this decentralized nature to align with the decentralized nature of the blockchain why it's decentralized and re remain to collect its data in centralized manner actually insurance is uh, somehow like the banking industry and we have a blockchain uh, startup company called itinerary which work in that field private transportation and ride sharing and and actually uh uber uh, i think all of us you mm, use uber, uber. And and now, Uber use a blockchain because it's create a s decentralized peer to peer, uh, without need of a third party that you can introduce in that the billing, the tariff, or any other parties, in that, in the same ledger, and update the record that if you want the record of the driver, and for each drive it append a new block. And that is the block of the driver. And for me as a consumer, and I want to know what's my billing, each car I had, I will had its block, which contain the driving data and the cost. Arcade City and Lazoo's investing more and more in that industry. And I think they will get with a new solution shortly. Online data storage industry and and actually, it's aligned with the concept of the online storage of the blockchain. It's from database perspective, it's a storage and it's a distributed and it's uh, hard to be hacked. So some companies like StoreJ introduce a blockchain as a cloud distributed storage and you can get it easily in the internet. Charity, uh, charity industry, it's uh, uh, 
the issue of the charity is it, it isn't not a complicated of its business rather than how can you secure that your fund was transferred to the needed people right a blockchain all transaction are shared in public computers so you can using your key you can uh, check anytime what is the state of your fund bitgive it's an uh, it's a startup which help uh, donors to see where they don't go a voting industry which is a political issue in all countries starting from the biggest countries in the world till the youngest country in the world the voting industry and with every election some arguing about if it's clear voting if we if they hack the vote if they change our votes are our votes are recorded or not the concept of shared ledger that you can verify even from the fingerprint of your as a, as a voter and you can track that without knowing the identity of that that says that gohar vote for x or y no i know that is gohar and i g i put his vote inside the ledger of the votee so i don't know and if 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 i want to manipulate i can't change the vote of gohar because after 10 minutes it will be distributed among all the computers and also i don't know if go her vote to X or Y. For that political issue, we have two startups which uh, working uh, hardly in that it's democracy Earth and follow my votes. And 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 actually, those companies their names uh, thinking about that it's a democracy, which we are thinking about and follow my votes that I'm not sure is my vote is considered or not. The government industry, like uh, uh, li li like the voting system, but it needs the governance and need to w uh, b uh, its inter its its enterprise as a government. So you need your work to be done in a secured manner, and in transparent way. But the example which I'm sharing now it's about Dubai, which aims to put its all its legal document in a blockchain by 2020 so dubai is thinking about its enterprise business how to use a blockchain like a data storage no it's a distributed storage healthcare industry and actually if you need to build a secured uh, a secured record and in each country uh, we have a record called electronic patient file which contain all your data and you need to append your updates of your health status so it's contain a, a secure data uh, illegal to be distributed among each others some hospitals and uh, and startups try to use blockchain like Jim and Tyrion. Energy management industry, energy management industry that it's it it uh, we are not thinking about energy management that we need to produce an energy. Some countries start to think about that I can produce an energy and sell those energy if it's el electricity or something like that to other people. So they started to build their own blockchain framework that you can buy or sell your electricity needed or generated to others without introducing any other third party. Transactive grid using Ethereum blockchain to build that framework and it's working now. online music industry at the internet you can put your media 
and usually it's hacked and you can download those media for free and we all use that using a blockchain that media will be distributed among the servers and it's encrypted so if you hack that computer you have the block of the media but you don't own or have the content of that media because you don't have its private key to decrypt it mycelia and mjo are two startups that work with uh, develop a solution based on a blockchain retail industry it's something like uh, we have uh, uh, I'm sorry open press and ob for the real estate uh, the issue of buying and selling re uh, uh, your assets you need to do that like what you did with the importer and exporter in a secured way with uh, the which to be distributed and help you to track uh, and verify the ownership of that document is a legal document of the ownership ubiquity it's 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 a company that aim to change the world in the area of the real estate industry it's building its ownership and actually a crowdfunding industry do anyone know what's the crowdfunding industry yes what is it perfect really i don't know that it's 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 become a mature to introduce an industry for that our colleague here says that it's uh if you are a startup and need money to be to uh, to uh, prove your idea or makes your proof of concept a working product and uh, another one was an investor need to invest his money in your startup that's the crowd uh, crowdfunding industry and actually if if i think if if i uh, i ask you a question that what is the industry of the blockchain that helps this presentation aims to send the message that every and each industry that have a security need a distribution or contain a record and it need its amendment uh want to be distributed all over among several computers can benefit from blockchain industry and if you think about two industries like taxi and uber both are matured enough but the 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 the, the, the lower part it's using the uh, blockchain and when we think about walmart which one of the largest uh, stores and alibaba the marriott and airbnb we are not saying that the the above brands are uh, not matured or not no walmart is one of the biggest stores all over the world but the way alibaba used to make his transaction and the popularity which he create using a blockchain let people in uh, uh, from america which which they have a lot of Walmarts that they can import their needs from Alibaba. Actually, the first the, the, the main issue is that you can go to Walmart and get your items now or order it online and get it within couple or three days. With Alibaba, the uh, transport uh, the uh, the shipment may take two to three months till now. Okay, what's the revolutionary benefits of blockchain? We see now. It's temper proof now the encryption mechanism it's matured enough do you know the uh, Bitcoin hack crisis that year do anyone know information about that hack before actually that year or uh, the last year uh, some people start to hack a bitcoin and they can control it more than using more than 51% of those computers using a high computer powers 
and stole about X of billions of dollars. What a Bitcoin did for that, it started to build its own new framework to return the Bitcoins from the stolen one to here. And actually, Bitcoin lost a lot of money and trust for that. But the aim of that story is that it's improved and since five years, it's only the, the first hack and hopefully it will be the last hack. The second point that it's no intermediaries. Now we are trying to neglect any intermediary. Each intermediary consume us a money and a time. The security. Security it's improved day by day. And each time we are speaking about blockchain or working with blockchain, a group of people are working on the blockchain security to enhance it. Reconcile data. Reconcile data. It's it's it reflects the the copies of the data among a lot of computers. And the last point. It's a smart contract which documents the contract between the seller and the buyer or the donor, the sender or the receiver. And when if if we need to recap what we are say what we said in that session, blockchain. It's one of the most a promising new technology for the future. It's a distributed ledger technology that relies in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum. It's a transparent and a safe. Uh, you can use a in decentralized manner. Uh, industries need to in use a blockchain and actually blockchain need to invade all the industries. Those are the uh, sources which you may use. Actually, I encourage you to u uh, use a blockchain.io, a blockchain.info, uh, blockchain which uh, is a trusted site which uh, monitors the size of the blocks and the usage uh, from early 2015, maybe, be yeah, no, uh, 2007 till now. And it's my, my, my recommendation that it's and if, if you want to know more about blockchain, start from now. Start to know its uh, methodology, uh, how uh, that encryption uh, benefits uh, the blockchain, how can you build your blockchain framework, which language you need to know if you will work with Go or work with Java, Will you use a Fabrix or Hyperledger? Uh, also, it's uh, when 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 you try to build your uh, proof of concepts, which will consume a lot of time. Start with a small idea, but I have a big implementation because if your proof of concepts. Uh, raised up and successfully you can implement it in wide range actually we are now all as a developer or an enterprise companies are investigating and touching the blockchain technology that who knows that your proof of concept may change the world of the industry you are developing the world that's okay that's okay. That's the end of the session. And if you want the presentation, please uh, send me a request, and I'll publish it in speaker deck. And for uh, for following, that's my uh, Twitter or email or any social media. It's ANS Gore. And thanks for uh, attending the sessions. Thank you.